Yeah, so I mean, you know, we filmed the video uh, a few weeks ago, and we showed that, for example, in New York and New Jersey, there were there were really no masks to buy, and still right now, it's very, very hard to buy masks. You know, some stores, you know, might have masks, but they'll quickly sell out within like a day or two. So first is, you know, a lot of people in America are starting to buy masks, and also, you know, particularly at the beginning, I had a lot of Chinese friends, they were um, buying masks and to shipping to China, because, you know, they wanted to give their friends and family. So. We, we went to New Jersey that day, you know, I know New York, I, I knew New York would not have masks. So we went to New, New Jersey thinking that New Jersey might have some masks. And we went to a, a bunch, a bunch of stores and drove a lot. And we, there were, there were no masks. So yes, most of the masks in the US are, are, are from China. Like, you know, we, we, we saw some of the labels on the masks are from China, but it's not, it's not just masks that, that, that's being affected. Actually, a lot of goods are being affected. So, so I was reading online today that people aren't able to get dresses, like prom or wedding dresses are getting sold out. So that's a huge, huge problem. You know, like people can't get married because there's no wedding dresses. You know, I mean, and then, and then if you look at, let's say like cars, a lot of car factories are complaining that, you know, they, they can't get like just one part. And so if you don't have one part, you can't build a car missing one part. So, you know, we are now like a huge globalized world. And you know, when China's affected, the whole world is affected. Yeah, I think so. So the first thing that I noticed was that again, I had a lot of Chinese friends. Like right away, they really wanted to find how they could help. I mean, they're in America, you know. China, China's so far. So they, they found they found you know one way to help was you know to ship masks to China. And so I, I was really almost like inspired by that. I don't I don't know if if you know Americans would do the same thing. The the other thing that I, that I found really um, interesting was was the lack of chaos in China. So in the U.S., you know, let's say when we we, we have like a a, a disaster. Let's take like a hurricane, for example. So Hurricane Katrina, or there was a hurricane recently in Puerto Rico. There's a lot of chaos. There's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of issues. Um, you'll notice sometimes in the news that people will put like a sign in front of their home that says, "You loot, we shoot." The, mean, the meaning be, if you steal our stuff, we'll shoot you. Because because people are are, are afraid. You know, they're, they're, at that time. Um, a lot of a lot of organizations are just too slow to bring help, so people are really afraid and they're st stealing and there's a lot of chaos. But I was actually surprised in China that, that there wasn't there wasn't that. I think maybe for Chinese people they might not be surprised, but for me I was really really surprised. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what would really happen when when the outbreak um, hits hits the U.S. You know, I, I'm I, I would I would be quite afraid. You know, I I, I think you know when I notice in China there's um. There's a lot of organization that's sort of lacking here. You know, I, I, for example, um, you know, in the U.S., there's so many different departments. You know, first we have the city government, the state government, the federal government, and they all have to talk to each other. There's not like a streamlined organizational hierarchy. So I think that's that's one problem. Um, another 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 problem is uh, there might there might not be enough people or resources to really like fight um, fight fight this issue. Let me answer the question about the Wall Street Journal. When I saw the title, I was I was I was really shocked. I was like, "Wow! Like, do they not do they not realize what what that means?" And it wasn't you know like if it was like a small newspaper, you know, it would be one thing. But it's it's a Wall Street Journal is a very famous paper. So I was very surprised and I was angry that they had this kind of title. So I wanted to educate you know particularly Americans that like you can't talk like this and then th this is wrong. So we, I filmed a, a video in English. So I really wanted Americans in the rest of the world to, to see that like this sort of racism is wrong. I don't want to I don't want to generalize, but I'll say like right there, there's some media in the U.S. that they their sensationalism. There's actually a term called yellow journalism. There's a, there's a long history of this, and they'll they'll create news content for views. And why why are they doing that? Because their their goal their goal is profitability. They don't really care too much about if the content is true, or if, if the let's say the title is is a, a title that is like ethical, um, and so I think that's a big problem. I mean, I think if, if it's particularly if you're a reputable news source, you have a responsibility. You know, you have all that power. You have a responsibility to tell the truth and and do do it in ways that you know are are respectful. You know, given a certain situation. Now, I wanna I wanna just. Um, share a highlight though is that people let's say people in in America I think are very different um, when we when we were on the street for example we, we were we were we were doing a video and we wanted to find people to say like Wuhan Jayo 
and that was so easy because normally when we, we we actually you know because I'm I'm in video work I'll interview people on the street it's very hard to get people to interview but everyone that we asked to just say Uhan Jaya was so willing to to express support so there's a lot of Americans that really care about this situation and really want to show their support you know for example I've also had a lot of comments on YouTube saying like oh you know I'm praying for China or or I, I care about China there's a lot of this. So, so uh, while while you know there are mistakes made in media in the U.S., there's also a lot of you know Americans that are just you know are good people. Um, something that I find very interesting in China is not not only are they very uh, Chinese people are very interested in showing their own culture. They're also very curious about other cultures. You know, a, a lot of Chinese are very curious about how America is. And I don't see this with Americans. A lot of Americans are not very curious about other cultures. They're very inward looking. They're, they're not looking out at, at the rest of the world. And this is a big, 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 big problem. I mean, I think I think Americans can learn a lot from China. And so, so you know, we, we did a video in English, you know, talking about, talking about, um, you know, sort of not being racist and 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 about the virus but um i think we need more sort of english content geared towards uh americans it might not necessarily be in the form of video but it's just it, it might be in the form of you know more like exchanges you know we, we need more americans going to china because i think you know you really have to go to a place to really understand it would love more Americans to see China so that they could they so that we could get WeChat Pay and high speed rails. Like there's there's one of my favorite Chinese words is Yalcho. Like I actually I love I love this word, you know. Um, and Americans don't have the Yalcho for 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 WeChat Pay or high speed high speed rails. But if let's say they could see that China has it, maybe we could get it, right? <laughs>